This is Selma Schimmel for the Group Room in Chicago at the AACR Annual Meeting, the American Association for Cancer Research. And now we are joined by Dr. Pamela Goodwin, Senior Scientist at the Samuel Lunenfeld Research Institute, the Marvell Koffler Chair in Breast Research, Professor of Medicine at the University of Toronto, Mount Sinai Hospital. How are you, Dr. Goodwin? I'm fine. We're interested in speaking with you because you're going to talk about really how a compound for one disease can turn out to have efficacy in another disease, such as cancer. In this case, it's a diabetic drug called metformin. Yes. And uh, it's an oral generic drug that lowers insulin. Yes. But suddenly we're defining, or we're finding that it may prevent or even cure cancer? Well, that's what we're investigating. Oncologists became interested in looking at metformin probably 10 or 12 years ago based on two parallel lines of evidence. The first came from our group and it was an observation that non-diabetic women with breast cancer who, who had higher insulin levels had worse outcomes. Um, and that set us on the road of searching for a drug that would lower insulin levels and led us to metformin. In parallel with what we were doing, basic scientists were elucidating the mechanism of action of metformin, and they found that it impacted components of the cell that were related to cancer. So those two areas of research came together, and it's led to a mini explosion of interest in metformin over the last decade. Talk to us a little bit about how sometimes it's a, you, a scientist stumble on things accidentally, Explain the process of, of, of how one even begins to make these parallel associations. So in this case, we were investigating obesity in women with breast cancer. It had been recognized for about 20 years that overweight women had worse outcomes when they had breast cancer. And we wanted to find out what was causing that, what was the physiologic factor causing that. And in the late 1990s, there, there was a, a diabetes um, drug, a, a new insulin that was being investigated by one of the pharmaceutical companies. And when that insulin was given to mice, it actually caused breast cancers. And that was the start of it. We saw that publication and thought, insulin, obesity, yes, it could be our mediator. And our investigation actually led us to conclude that insulin was one of the mediators. And that set us down the pathway. So is this a compound that may show its efficacy in, in breast cancer or other cancers as well? The interest is because metformin seems to um, or may play a role in all types of cancer or in virtually all types of cancer. It may play a role in cancer prevention. It may play a role in cancer treatment. And it may act by influencing the insulin le levels in the patient. And we call that a host effect or a patient effect. It may also act directly on the cancer cell, quite independent of the insulin levels. And there's an enormous amount of energy going into trying to sort out which of those two possibilities is actually the case and whether it may differ from one cancer to another. In breast cancer, there's growing evidence that metformin is impacting insulin and that that change in insulin is in fact leading to changes in the breast cancer cell. So where's the research now? Right now, um, there are 37 cancer trials in progress looking at metformin. The largest of them is a trial that we're running out of Canada, but it involves 300 centers in North America. Most of them are in the States. And we're giving metformin, or placebo, to 3,500 women who've had breast cancer diagnosed and had their initial round of treatment. And we're asking them to take the medication for five years to see if it will lower the risk of recurrence and help them live longer. So we're asking a very fundamental question as to whether metformin will, will improve outcome of breast cancer. What's the criteria to be part of the study? This study is called MA32, and it's open to most women who've had early stage breast cancer. Women who've had the very earliest stages are not eligible, but anyone who has positive nodes or a tumor that's greater than two centimeters or certain tumors between one and two centimeters. So the stage, stage two? Stage one or two and three, stage one, two, and three, but not all stage ones. Mm -hmm. um, and the women have had their surgery, they've had radiation, if they needed chemo, they finished that, and they can then go on study. What phase is the study in? This is a phase three study, so it's a definitive trial. Um, it's accruing very rapidly right now. In fact, today, 
we passed the halfway mark in our accrual. We're randomizing about 10 patients a day. Women love being on this study. One of the side effects of metformin is that you lose weight. So it's uh, <laughs> very popular with a lot of the patients. A five to 10 pound weight loss is very common. Wow, mm -hmm. that's significant. Yes. So what's happening in the U.S. with this study? So in the U.S., actually about 80% of the patients are coming from the U.S. Um, there's over 250 centers open in the U.S. Most major cancer centers have it open. Women can ask their oncologist about the study. And there are other studies going on in other tumor sites, colorectal, prostate, endometrium, pediatric cancers, hematologic cancers. There's a lot of work ongoing. Is this also a global study in Europe as well? It involves two countries, the United Kingdom and Switzerland. Um, most European companies, countries would like to participate, but because this is a generic drug, funding is very difficult. We don't have a pharmaceutical company behind us, so we've had to cobble together funding from a large number of sources to run this study. And right now, the major impediment to opening it in addition, additional European countries is funding. You know, it's very interesting because when you get to speak to a scientist and a physician that's involved in research, of, that happens at their institution that isn't mm -hmm. industry funded or you know comes out of their own labs. That has to be a, just a real sense of, of pride and, and uh, excitement. It is, but I, I think in this case my goal is to help cancer patients and I think in this case the absence of a pharmaceutical partner has slowed us down because every step of the way we've had to go to find money and in this particular trial, um, the drug, metformin and placebo, because half the women get placebo, is being provided by, of all things, a Canadian generic drug company that's called Apotex. So we actually have the generic pharmaceutical industry stepping up to the plate to help us develop a generic drug. Thank you very much, Dr. Pamela Goodwin, Senior Scientist at the Samuel Lunenfeld Research Institute, Marvel Koffler Chair in Breast Research, Professor of Medicine at the University of Toronto, Mount Sinai Hospital, coming from Canada. And I really thank you for your innovative research. I wish you and all of us well. I am a breast cancer survivor. Oh, thank you. Thank you.